When Agadoo started almost 11 years ago, it was a simple program. Back when it was called FUN, you had a basic physics simulator that can simulate objects with accurate physics. It had been acquired by Algorox in 2009 after the creator, Emil Enerfeld, sent it off to Kenneth Bowden. Algadoo has expanded since then, adding more and more features. All this came at a cost though, and the company responsible for Algadoo have not updated the program in 6 years. We'll show you how the company is responding, how to protect yourself from this, and look back at our previous prediction for Algadoo and reevaluate it. Algadoo may be dying, but we still have time to save it. This video is a continuation of my previous video about why Algadoo is dying and what the situation is for the company who made it. In that video, I talked about a couple of things. 1. The history of Algadoo and how we got here. 2. Algadoo's involvement in the education market. 3. The fall of the program and what happened to it. And 4. How it can be solved. Now required to watch the first video to understand this video, I'll give you the background information. Links to the video can be found in the description and comment section, and I'll put a card to it right now. One of the many things many people don't know about Algadoo is who made it. For other games, you and I are Minecraft made by Mojang, Fortnite is made by Epic Games, and Roblox is made by Roblox Corporation. Fun fact, Minecraft and Algadoo were both made by companies in Sweden. Now, if you watch a previous video, Jug Around Algadoo, or up knows this, you would know that the physics program is made by Algorix. Now, Algorix has not had a public statement on this issue at the time of writing. Not Twitter, YouTube, or even Facebook. Then again, no one uses Facebook, so it makes sense. As for Twitter and YouTube, they don't really post that much on Twitter, and YouTube's more about the toilets that are somehow not related to Algadoo. This also means if you want to talk to them about certain issues, you're out of luck. You can try commenting them on YouTube or tweeting them out on Twitter, but sometimes you don't always get a reply. And even if you do get a reply, it'll likely not be that useful. This is more common on YouTube, where a bunch of comments talking about Algadoo haven't been answered. They should check out my video for more information. With that, you have a pretty limited range of options on how to contact Algorix. However, there is one option that works a lot more often instead of having a hope that Algorix responds to you, you'll have a reply to take anywhere from one day all the way to three months. Seriously, it actually happened. And this is mail. No, not snail mail or postal mail, electronic mail, also known as email. You may be wondering where their email is, and that's pretty easy to find since they kindly give it out on the website. If typing in their email is too hard, you can use this. You'll however have to go through this really hard CAPTCHA which literally tells you to write some characters and telling you which number is bigger. But because I'm nice, I'll tell you indeed 4 is smaller than 10 because the number 4 has one character instead of 2. How do you navigate who owns Algadoo, where to contact them, and how to navigate their website? You have to play the yes game called the waiting game. Eventually you'll get a response from Algorix and you're done. This is the process I went through starting on February 1st and I'll show you what happened. Near the end of February, I sent an email to Algorix about concerns with Algadoo not receiving any new updates since 2013. They responded with, Hi, Algadoo development is currently only done when it stops working with new versions of the operating system. We are waiting for schools to be more ready for the technology before we develop further. Your Algadoo support team, Emmanuel Dogferg. And here's his lovely face. I responded back, and this is the time where it took 3 months for Algorix to respond. Both emails are not important to the story. Later on, I sent an email on June 21st which really got it rolling. It was a long one, where I basically talked about how 64-bit only compatibility on a 32-bit program will hurt Algodoo for Mac users. Then I told them about all the problems this will cause, and what they should do to combat this. You know what they said? Emmanuel's reply went to their non-decision about updating Algodoo to 64-bit for the Mac. And they also talk about the iOS being already updated to 64-bit, which is something a lot of people don't know. Let's recap. I sent my first email to them on February 21st. Algorix responded back with another email a week later. I shoot the reply on March 4th. There was a three-month gap before Algorix made a response on June 4th. I asked about the 64-bit stuff on the same month on the 21st. And Algorix tells a lack of a decision for an update on the 29th. Now here's where it gets interesting. After all the other emails I sent, on July 6th, I try to reinforce the idea of an update to keep up with 64-bit would be good. And then we get to the point where Algorix tells me something that's a little promising. They explained, a new version of Algorix can be released after Halina has been released. It shows that Algorix is indeed working on an update for Algodoo. However, this update will release after macOS Catalina, which is a big problem for many people who are going to update. At the time of writing, there haven't been any more updates, but click the subscribe button to keep up with this. 
It may seem like the end of the world for some people, but there are plenty of things you can do to protect yourself. At the very least, safeguard yourself from the transition and future ones. Some of these tips are for Mac users, but all these tips will help in some way for everyone watching. Here are 5 ways to protect yourself from the update for now and the future. 1. Back up your Alkadoo files. This may seem trivial, but there are a lot of people that have not made a backup of their files on Algadoo. Some people are just lazy, but many people have no know how to back up their files on Algadoo. It's actually a lot simpler than it looks. Let's get into Algadoo to see how to back up your files. I won't get into specifics for this video, but you can check out a video in the top right when it comes out. Basically, you need to go and find the Algadoo folder and put it on a flash drive, which you can do by going to Gold Folder and typing this. Place name here with your computer name. 2. Keep up to date with the news. Often, many things like this happen, and it can cause bigger problems since people don't usually talk about them. Usually, people give a notice if they're doing stuff that could affect people. If you think that this could affect you, speak up! I sent that email with algorithms about the issue all the way in February. The sooner the better, as it gives more time for the person or company to respond, and it's never too late to start. 3. Contact Algorix. Now, Algorix isn't very open as a company and doesn't talk that much on social media. This means you want to contact them, you're basically out of luck. However, I already showed you how to contact them by email and you can use that to voice your pains at the company, talk to them, and to better know them as a company. Until they start using social media more, this is the best option you have to contact Algorix. 4. Don't update your computer to macOS Catalina. Until Algorix creates a working version of Algodoo for 64-bit, don't update. This is possibly one of the most important tips. As stated before, Algorix will be updating Algodoo after macOS Catalina is released. Algorix does not state a hard deadline for the next update, so that means for the time being, you should keep your computer on macOS Mojave for the time being until Algorix starts updates the program to 64-bit. 5. Share this video. Now I know, this may look like a ploy to get more people watching this video, but it really helps. We need to start a conversation on this and get as many people prepared for this transition this fall as people start updating. This topic is really important for people who use algorithms in their careers, hobbies, or just using it for fun. These people should know about this so they can figure out what's going on and don't get confused when signing them update to Mac OS Catalina. Algodoo's future is being called to question as macOS Catalina makes history by being the first operating system that won't support 32-bit applications. In the last video, I talked about how a subscription model could work for the program. However, speaking out about the issues can also help. Algorix could be blamed for doing certain things to Algodoo, but as consumers, we should also take the blame for not talking about the issues. Not too many people know this, but Algodoo figures on the App Store has not been working since macOS Moabe. This is not the fault of Algorox, but us, as no one talks about it. Algodoo may fall into the same trap if we don't act now, and we should. Check out the previous video down below, and take a look at some of the other videos I have right here. Subscribe to keep up with this story.